Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Off The Ropes. I'm Paul, and I know wrestling. I'm Audrey, and I don't. Today we're doing the first time we've done this one, WWE Smackdown for uh, February 25th. 2022. <laughs> so I was looking forward to this because they got so much building for WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. And so they started the show right off with Brock vs. Roman, kind of like a recap of what we've got so far. And, uh, you know, their little recap things are always impressive. Yeah. They always get you pumped up. Yeah. And they do a pretty good job of filling in on, on the storyline. Mm -hmm, if you haven't been paying attention. Right. This one's funny because they started building the Brock Lesnar vs. Roman Reigns match at WrestleMania as the greatest WrestleMania match of, of all, all time. time. And another thing that's um, noteworthy is we got Pat McAfee back on commentary. And if you don't know, he rules. He's one of the best, if not the best. Besides JR. In my opinion, on color commentary, Pat's the man. <laughs> so the first thing we got off of here is Ronda Rousey mm -hmm. doing her promo. And uh, with Michael Cole out in the ring doing yeah. a little interview, which is something they don't really do a lot. Yeah, I and, liked it though. Yeah, and Pat called Michael Cole the greatest announcer yeah. of all time. Michael Cole's good though. But yeah, what did you think of Ronda? Um, I liked it. I wrote Ronda in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a pretty great sign because they're in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Someone had a sign that said Rhonda prefers Nestle chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh. Um, during Rhonda's promo, of course, short Charlotte had to come out and um, interrupt. Yeah. And following Charlotte's well, interruption. In Charlotte's defense, Rhonda said she was going to be the first person in a quadrennial to, to make Charlotte submit. And she's truthing. Because <laughs> Charlotte doesn't submit. Um, I thought Rhonda's promo before that, though, when she was talking about her mom and growing mm -hmm. up or anything, that felt kind of real. Yeah, or maybe like the really realist. Touching. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you could see her like thinking about it. And usually, you don't see the wheels turning like that. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe it was kind of real. Yeah, I, a little I, touch I agree. Of, yeah, for sure. Um, what did you think of Charlotte's interruption? Um, I just wrote Charlotte. Period, and I think that says it all. Um, I think Charlotte is doing some of the best mic work around right now uh i'm always surprised when i see you know internet people kind of bugging about it i think mm -hmm. she's a great troll um and then she said she was going to put the figure eight on ronda and make her scream for mercy so that made me laugh and uh then sonia sneak attack uh just kind of got in and they're working on ronda's knee what do you think of that if Rhonda don't beat Sonya's butt, I'm going to. Because <laughs> they announced after that, because Adam <laughs> Pierce was angry with Sonya for interfering. Because mm -hmm. Sonya's supposed to be, you know, like one of the um, like leaders of WWE right now. Um, and they announced that she has to face Rhonda. Adam Pierce did. He was angry. You got to face Rhonda next week, bro. So good job on that. But what'd you think about this? What'd you give it? I forgot to rate it. Well, I rated it a... I was thinking 7, though. Yeah, I rated it a 7.5 because it was a nice length. It got everything across. Mm -hmm. We know what we're dealing with. It's setting up the story, and it didn't overstay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too long. A lot of times, WWE, when they come out with these, they last way too long. Yeah, I agree. I mean, don't start your show with 20 minutes. Give us a match. So, <clears throat> 7.5 for that one for me. Okay. Okay, so the next thing coming out was Kofi and Big E, right? Mm hmm And they're riding on their little quad, which is so cool because my son Anakin just got that quad for his birthday from my sister. And so he had it earlier today, and then boom, they were driving it out there on SmackDown. So that That's was pretty awesome. cool. Yeah, and pretty fun. And uh, they were going against Los Lotharios, the Lethal Lovers. Which doesn't, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> and then 
they did this thing for the second week in a row where they did a kiss cam. Mm -hmm. They go over and kiss a kiss fan randomly. A, fan, a random fan in the audience. Yeah. Um, back in the day, they had a thing. This There was a wrestler named Ravishing Rick Rude in the WWE. And he would pick someone from the crowd and go over and kiss them. Now, to this day, I would swear to you, that was not a work. I don't know if it was or not. If anyone knows, drop it in the comments. I would swear that was completely a shoot and he would really truly kiss a random fan. Like on the mouth? Yeah. Wow. And there was all kind of storylines where he was stealing people's wives and everything, but whatever. So it kind of reminded me of that. Also, I wanted to note that Jessica was the referee of this match. Love Jessica. Jessica, our queen. Yeah. At night before I go to bed, I pray to Jessica. <laughs> And what what did you think of this? Um, I wrote a few no few notes down. I said Umberto kiss cam. I'm going to SmackDown. <laughs> um, and then I wrote Umberto, look at me. This isn't you. <laughs> what was that for? Just being just, a bad guy. Yeah, I need him to go back. You know yeah. what I mean? You like baby face. Yeah, Umberto. his dimples are too cute for him to be evil. Well, let me ask you a question. What's a baby face? I'm just kidding. Um. It was Biggie's birthday. Yes. Happy birthday, Biggie! Happy birthday, Biggie! Thank you for existing. We love you. We love you. Tons. Um, they did this really cool uh, leapfrog leg drop. Yeah, I wrote something about that. Okay. Down. Okay. Um, the one they. Kofi over the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just wrote down that I thought it was cool. That was a cool. That move. was it. I also liked the one move that the Lutharios did on oh, Kofi. That was awesome. That was really cool too. It was like a double slingshot. And they had, it was like they were doing a, some kind of a leg submission hold. Mm -hmm. And they flipped over a double slingshot into almost like a a leggy powerbomb. I don't know how else to put it. It's it was probably cool. A, a, I'll, a put, term a, I'll for put a video it. if I can find it. That was really neat. Um, New Day tried to put the finishers on them twice. Uh, they put the, the finisher off the top rope. They do this really cool finisher. And then they, of course, got distracted. There's shenanigans from the outside. And they do wind up hitting the other finisher on him after Big E gets on the quad and threatens to run over <laughs> Umberto, which my wife was cheering for. And I was not. <laughs> Leave him alone. So, yeah, it was a fun match. I, I had a really fun time with it. I really enjoyed that. I also wanted to mention they were kicking each other very hard. They really were. They were, they were, they were kicking in. the swear word out of each other. They were. They and were. Big E was just smacking people mm -hmm. with that. Like, Former. you could just hear every hit in that match. Like, yeah. louder than usual. Yeah, they were laying it in. Um, I gave it an 8. I gave it a 9. I think that's fair. It's somewhere in there, 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. It's uh, 8.5 averaged out. Really good pro wrestlers <laughs> doing their thing really well. Mm -hmm. The shenanigans, you know, they are what they are. You're going to get them. Right. It was fine. Next, uh, we had Sam Roberts. Wait, you didn't write oh. anything about the truck commercial? Oh, the truck commercial? Oh, with Boogs and Shinsuke? Yes. Yes, yes. Well, the Sam Roberts thing came right before the truck commercial and right after. So at first we find out <laughs> Rick Boogs, who we're huge fans of, and Shinsuke Nakamura. all. <laughs> They had this super wholesome thing where they were like driving around in a truck. I just thought it was the most endearing commercial I've ever seen. It was cool. They were kayaking together. They were kayaking. They were um, talking. He was asking them questions about... Boogs was asking yeah. Shinsuke questions. They were like bonding. Yeah. I gave that beautiful. a 10. I actually did? I did too. <laughs> did you just do that? No. I gave it oh, a 10. Okay. I thought... That I want more of that. Oh, okay. I it agree. was short. It was sweet. That was a great commercial. It was Congrats fun. to the truck brand that I don't remember. I don't think it was. I think it was just a little mm -hmm. segment that looked like a commercial. Oh well, it was beautiful either way. <laughs> it was beautiful. Um. Then it went back to Sam Roberts, the podcaster, and mm -hmm. he had the Usos, and the Usos were cutting a pretty cool promo. And yeah, I didn't write anything about that. Either. Well, they got interrupted by the Viking Raiders. The Usos were synchronizing everything, which I thought was funny. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> all their words were synchronized. You know, nothing special. I gave it a seven. I didn't. Seamus and Ridge then, they caught up to New Day backstage, still riding on the quad, mm -hmm. riding on the little truck thing. And that was whatever. Seamus was speaking Simlish. <laughs> Could not understand anything he said. 
and then they rode away and he yelled in simlish and that's your summary for that he drove off so fast that it looked like Kofi was gonna fall <laughs> yeah Kofi was like holding on oh, for like, dear life slow down baby <laughs> and then we got Zaya Lee versus Natalia her first match mm -hmm. on, in you know on Smackdown yeah her and debut wrestling match on Smack, Smackdown against Natalia mm -hmm. who's lately been pushing this thing where she's Holding holds Guinness record. records yeah. yeah so she brings the book out with her and holds it up you know which I thought was funny against Zia Lee because she was the first Chinese woman ever on Smackdown so she might so have. you're she's also holding you know a record a record right I'm just saying Natalia right um I thought Zaya was just acquitted herself really well I really really liked her that was my first time seeing her and I immediately liked her I think her look is really cool her makeup was gorgeous more of that WWE please she's hyper athletic yeah she's moved super quick her finisher yeah the finisher was that cool. was so cool um Natalia also had this super awesome submission hold where she oh, had her yeah. kind of stretched and the With leg, the leg up. under her leg and that was pretty cool that was really cool uh the crowd was chanting Hershey's chocolate that was interesting <laughs> which Pat translated into let's go Zaya because it, it, Pat they were not saying let's go Zaya. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had the Zaya roundhouse, like you said, that was yeah, very, very cool. effective. Her arm movements with it. Yeah. Just very cool. I gave it an eight. I gave that a nine. I mean a nine is justifiable. I took it down one, I gave it an eight because of the time. Yeah. It was pretty quick, but it, it was, was what quick. it needed to but be. But I thought it was effective. It was. It was a good debut. Mm -hmm. Natalia didn't completely job out. Yeah. Which is always a fear I have when they bring mm -hmm. new people in. I want the, the the new people to win, but you don't want to make your the rest of your roster look weak. Yeah. So Natalia didn't completely job out, and it was a nice little match back and forth. I mean, I wouldn't have problems with a nine, really. Mm -hmm. Just I 8. wish it was 5. a little bit longer. 8.5. <laughs> and what was next? Sammy and Knoxville. Sammy... <laughs> got to do an intercontinental championship celebration celebration he was so locked in it was so funny he's so funny so he's good so good at this character he's such a troll um and then also he keeps talking back about the conspiracy that he has <laughs> like oh wwe has a conspiracy to stop me and he addressed that again here which i thought was really cool because it's this nice long-term storytelling sammy's been doing that for months so I thought it was pretty cool that he kept it going here. Mm -hmm. And then of course he's like, I'll defend this against anybody. And Johnny Knoxville. Corona hit, which is the name of the Minutemen song that they use for the Jackass mm -hmm. theme, which I'm always happy to hear because I love Minutemen. Knoxville came out and he got a huge pop. Yeah, it was the biggest pop of the night. Actually. Until the end. It was almost the biggest pop of the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so far. You're out, it yeah. Was, for the, up to that point. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Words. And Sammy's like, oh, yeah, you could have a, a title defense. Get to the back of the line. Yeah, well, that wasn't that. When he said... Uh, he wasn't talking to Johnny. Right, he was talking to Ricochet. That was backstage after he beat Johnny up. Rude? Yes. Rude? Um, and then he went backstage and Ricochet... Yes, and right. Now Ricochet there's a match interrupted set up him. for them next week. Ricochet, who we love. Love Ricochet. Um, I always felt like they underutilized Ricochet, so I'm happy to see him getting chances. I don't mm -hmm. expect that he's going to beat Sammy. I wish he would, but I think they're setting up Sammy versus Knoxville mm -hmm. for WrestleMania. WrestleMania. But I wish he would. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky. So mm -hmm. they announced that next SmackDown. Sammy versus Ricochet for the championship. So that's exciting mm -hmm. and cool. That'll be fun. And that, for what it was, I gave that whole segment an eight. I gave it an eight too. Yeah, I thought the crowd was really good. Mm -hmm. um, at one point when he's like, Knoxville's like, yeah, you give me a match and the whole crowd's doing. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Even though that guy's in A&E &E, <laughs> battling out for Daniel's supremacy. There can um, only be one Daniel. <laughs> So yeah, we get that next week, and that was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, I did have one more comment. Um, well, I wrote fun, cute. 
But then I said, would have been better if Sammy floated away when he grabbed the bundle of balloons. <laughs> that's right. He had, he had a handful of the celebration balloons. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Um, next we had Sasha Banks mm -hmm. versus Shotzi. Uh -huh. uh, my wife was booing at this one. She wasn't alone. She booed both women. Your guys' favorite, I think. Um, Naomi interrupted to come down for commentary. Mm -hmm. Naomi's commentary was cute. I said her makeup is slaying. It was. Yeah, she looked cool. Uh, she had Pat dancing. Yeah, that was cute. Which isn't really hard to do if you watch yeah. the show, Pat he dances. He said that he beat her in a dance-off once. I wonder if and that's... she said, stop bringing that up. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. <laughs> that's a cute little back and forth. Um, I gave this a seven because it was so fast. I gave it a six because I don't like Sasha's outfit. Stop wearing Sailor Moon. You don't deserve it. Dang, poor I'm Sasha. I'm sorry. Her as a person, we would probably get along. Her character just annoys me. <laughs> I'm in kayfabe, right? Yes. Right? Yes. I thought they were both did their job. Mm -hmm. So I gave it a seven. Except for they... Go ahead. You can say it. We're probably going to say the same thing. Well, I don't like the way they jobbed out Shotzi. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's, you don't have that took the enough sure. women in the mid and upper mm -hmm. card to be jobbing these guys so um, easily, I guess. Right. So, yeah. I mean, Sasha can beat her, just not like that. Yeah, and Sasha should, because right. they're building her. She should win. Right. Just you stop wanna... taking down all of your roster yeah. and bring one person up. That's it, yeah. Hire more people. Stop releasing the old ones. Um, but what really happened there that was noteworthy is Naomi gets in with a mic and announces that that Sasha and Naomi are gonna go for the tag team belts. Oh, I don't remember that. You remember that? I didn't write anything down about that. Yeah, she came in at the end. Naomi announced that they're a new tag team, which is interesting because Naomi and Sasha. Yeah, it's oh. interesting because. They like don't Naomi. have very many women's tag teams. I was thinking no. about it the other day. Carmella and uh, Z and Zelina are the champs. Oh my god! Everyone else is broke up. I can't really. WWE, think. look me in the eyes. I could beat both of those girls at the same time, and I don't even work out. Please get it together. I mean, they're cool, but like they're funny. You need more tag teams. You need more tag teams, especially for the women. I yeah. said it about AEW. I'm going to say it about you, too. I wore this shirt. And actually, Shotzi was her partner. Oh, really? Ember Moon's partner. They were cool together. That was when Shotzi was cool and not annoying. You know what you could have used? Ember, Ember Moon. Moon. All right. Um, next up was Madcap and Corbin. And they were kind of recapping the Drew feud. Mm -hmm. Where Madcap, oh, he landed on his head in that match last week. And that was real, and I did not like watching that over and over in slow motion. But the shtick was Corbin coming out and saying, oh, you survived that, you know. You're the man, mm -hmm. you know. Because it was supposed to be Corbin versus Drew. And then Corbin came out, and he was like, no, we're switching that over to uh, oh, brother. Mad Cat. <laughs> Corbin. Uh, it's like an old version of him wearing I don't even hair. look like him. <laughs> I thought that was Drew. No, it's Corbin. He came out and said, Madcap, you know, I want you to really prove you're the man. You're going to switch over and take on Drew tonight. And Corbin was kind of like, or Madcap was like, uh, uh, I don't really want to do this. And this entire time he's like holding his neck and kind yeah. of like, you know, he kinda, playing it up. Corbin like kind of coaxed him to get in the ring. Yeah, he, up on that apron. He kind of gaslit him. He Let's did. be real. He, he kind of gaslit him. Yeah. Corbin, gaslighting's not cool. Stop manipulating your friends. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then Pat said that when he makes characters on uh, WWE 2K, he tries to make himself look like <laughs> Drew McIntyre. Yeah, that was funny. That was funny. Uh, and then Drew just hit this. Oh, oh my God, that Claymore, bro. One of the you most beautiful Claymores. Like, not even when we weren't watching the match, you know, because we were a little behind. We opened the front door and we heard this loud smack. And we were like, what was that? <laughs> we finally got to the part. We were like, oh, my God, we heard that Claymore all the way from Hershey Park. It was <laughs> <laughs> it was vicious because Madcap was building up speed, running Bounced rope to rope. The ropes. And just bam. Off the ropes. Drew slaughtered him. Yeah. Off the ropes, yeah. That's the name of the show. And then he ends it with aiming his sword over yeah. the WrestleMania sign and at, and at Corbin. Corbin. 
because he's going to get him at WrestleMania. And he's going to win. And then we can be done with that feud, and Drew can go back up the card where he needs to be. Mm -hmm. I actually I think Corbin needs to be up there, too. I agree. I gave that an 8. I, I thought it was super also solid. I also gave it an 8. Yep. I'm always going to give Drew the benefit of the doubt because... Yeah. Drew's going to get a 7 at least, no matter what he does. Drew is our sad. house favorite. Mm -hmm. Everyone roots for Drew, yeah. no matter who he's it's facing. The one, I think that's the one person we all root for, no matter what. Drew's a uniter, not a divider. So true. We love Drew. Bars. <laughs> and then for some reason, there was a Ronda promo with Megan Morant. And it was just this, I didn't even write anything down about that. There wasn't really nothing to write. It was like yeah. 10 seconds, and she was like, I'm going to beat her up or whatever. But it got me to thinking, these interviewers need more work. Because mm -hmm. WWE oh, has... Oh, I a, wrote that down. Oh, weird interviewers. Weird A interviewers. Because <laughs> they're coming from a history where you used to have freaking mean, mm -hmm. woo, my God, Gene. And you can't just have mean Gene Okerlund and then just somebody that looks like they just got in front of a microphone. Yeah. And it's no offense to her. She might turn out to be great. Right. I hope she does. It's awkward. It's awkward. It's weird. You know, I don't know. You know just, they need to work on it. They need to work need on to work it, work. for sure. Where's Kayla? That's Where's what, Kayla? Yeah, that's what my wife said. So true, Mom. Um, then we got to the main event, which today was a contract signing. Contract signing. WWE loves to do these, and I think they're pretty entertaining. I think they're fun, but I don't get it. They like, <laughs> why don't you get it? <laughs> like, why are they signing a contract? Like, you're just, it's a match. <laughs> it's like, just do the match. Quit being, like, grow up. What are you doing? It'd be weird. <laughs> Uh, my wife wanted me to note that Roman's tracksuit was on point. Had his little logo on it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, they had a bunch of security up on the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, which was sort of reminiscent of... Uh, AEW. Yeah, they Kingston. Had similar thing. But there was like ten. Yeah, and there was only four at AEW. And you could tell Lesnar was like kayfabe annoyed with all the security. Yeah, he was. He was calling them skid marks. He called them skid marks. <laughs> There was a sign in the crowd I want to acknowledge for a second here. The sign said, we want Cesaro, and it's true. We want Cesaro. Make him an offer of getting back in there. Or Cesaro, go to Impact, because you'd be a big fish mm -hmm. at Impact. Mm -hmm. um, then Paul Heyman. You were done a lot. <laughs> I did, because this was something, I really loved this. Paul Heyman came out and started talking about how this match was the greatest match ever. I mean, first off, no one has the mic like Paul Heyman right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody. He's the best on the mic in the world. I don't care what anybody says. MJF is the only one that's close, in my opinion. Other guys are really great, but Paul Heyman is mm -hmm. one of a kind. And he said it's bigger than Hulk Hogan versus Andre. And then he said it's bigger than Stone Cold versus The Rock. And Rome was like, definitely. For sure. Definitely bigger than that. Get that out of here. That's why nothing. would you even mention that? <laughs> um, and then also in between this, we got for some reason there's a little announcement that Pat McAfee is going to have Vince McMahon on his YouTube show. Oh yeah, which I'm going to watch. I'm not, but I'll hear a summary. I'll tell her about it. <laughs> uh, I thought Brock came out looking super cool. Yeah, I wrote love Brock's hat. Yeah, the cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah, I love the cowboy hat. His it dress, looks great. It does. It's, it's That's so... what won me over. I didn't like him two weeks ago. <laughs> he comes out in that cowboy hat. Got to support. And he's got the all black. Yeehaw. The vest mm -hmm. that mom loves. Mom hates the vest. I thought it looked cool on him. I think it's the coolest he's ever looked, really, with the little ponytail. He's yeah. got the mustache and beard. Um, he did a good job with his promo introducing himself. He's so much better on the mic than he used to be. Mm -hmm. And then Paul Heyman jumped in and admonished him like a child, which had me cracking up. Mm -hmm. And he also talked about the unification of the belts, yeah. which is something I've been wondering about. Mm -hmm. So if the winner gets, the winner of this match gets the other one's belt, are they going to have two belts? Or are they going to finally unify them into one belt? One belt. That'll be interesting to see. I don't think they will because I think they're going to want to keep a belt for each show. Yeah, I hope they don't. It'll be interesting. Because I then, want Seth to get a belt. That's the reason why. Yeah. There's no other reason. I don't care. Seth needs a belt. Seth does need a belt. 
It'd be so fun. Yeah. Belt. And the Drew needs another belt. <laughs> so. <laughs> there you go. There's the two belts. <laughs> uh, then Roman took the mic and he laid down the best promo of his career so far, I think. He started out calling Brock Lesnar a farm boy. And he just stood up and he got really loud. He said everything in this ring was his. The show is his. He got out. He was pointing at the announce table. The announce table is mine. This whole crowd is mine. It was so awesome. It reminded me of uh, The Rock or Stone Cold type. That level of promo mm -hmm. where it, I just felt super hyped. I was like, yes, yes, this is how it's done. I thought that he really killed that. And then Lesnar destroyed all the skid marks. Yeah. <laughs> like he destroyed he just them. Demolished them. Not not in a promo way. He just beat them up. He like was throwing tables and chairs oh at them. Like they it was like dominoes the way they fell. The way he took that table and just wiped those guys out. <laughs> and the, everybody else, the Usos, I forgot the Usos were out there too. The Usos, Heyman and Roman were all back in the in the <laughs> yeah. walk up now. And they're just like, oh shit, even Romo was a little bit like, okay, that was a little bit scary. <laughs> Obviously, I gave that a 10. I gave that a 10 too, but I had more thoughts. Go, let's hear them. Um, I said, Heyman is so funny. Great promo by Roman, and you know how I feel about him. She's so. not, she, you're not a huge Roman fan. No. In fact, I'm anti-Roman. Dang. Roman, if you're watching this, me and you, WrestleMania. <laughs> Belt unification. <laughs> belt unification. I have a fake 24-7 She'll put belt. these cow earrings on. For legal reasons, this was a joke. I don't really want to fight Roman Reigns. That's scary. I'm lying. Thank you. As usual, SmackDown just flying by. Yeah, that was very quick. Um, And Roman's going to smash him at WrestleMania. He's going to smash him. But he's going to lose, though, which just sucks. My mom's <laughs> going to be so sad. Right, Mom? What'd you say? She said he's going to smash him. <laughs> yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's wrap-up. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you for Monday Night Raw. Raw.